Hello and welcome to Chapter 11, Module 5, IP Addressing, Subnetting. So today we're going to start subnetting. All right, so subnetting means you're going to take a network and break it up into smaller networks. All right, because having a one big collision domain or broadcast domain um, is not advisable. So why do you want to break up your network? Well, first of all, why would you want to have a very large network with a lot of users in it? One broadcast domain. A broadcast domain means if someone speaks, everybody has to listen. If you remember earlier in the semester when we said anytime you want to communicate with anyone in the LAN, you have to send out an ARP request. That ARP request requesting the MAC address of somebody of you in your LAN is a broadcast message. So if you send that ARP request, everyone in the land and you are in that land you cannot communicate because you have to respond to this arp and process it to see if somebody's asking for your mac address and therefore your performance drops that's number one number two uh, for security purposes you want you you probably don't want everybody to say to be in the same broadcast domain because every time you send out a broadcast domain that somebody that you don't want is in there and will be able to hear it so for security purposes and for a performance, uh, you probably want to be in a small land, private. You're not not necessarily private, but on your own in your small in a smaller broadcast domain, and it's easier to administer. So the benefits of subnetting, breaking up the big network into smaller subnets, is for performance purposes. You can communicate much quicker. That's what performance means. Send data much faster. Security purposes because you're in the same LAN and uh, you're in the same broadcast domain and for maintenance purposes, for management also as well. All right, so how do we subnet? So let's say in the old days you went out and you purchased a slash 25 address. What does that mean? By the way, please write these down and I want you to submit those when we're all done. So slash 25 means that you have the first 25 bits is a network address. That's what your ISP gave you. And he left you with seven bits. That's with seven on the top. How many hosts can you give an IP address that has the first 25 bits as the network? 126 bits. Because the seven bits that are left over for the host, two to the seven, gives me 128 different IP address, different host addresses. But we got to take away two. Why do we take away two? From this 128, 27 is 128, is because we got uh, we cannot use the network portion and we cannot we cannot use the broadcast address. So we got to take these two away. So we're left with 126 host addresses. So for a network that has slash 24, that means the first 25 bits is your network address. You can accommodate up to 126 addresses. That's what that means. You guys know how to convert the slash to a decimal format right we did that in the previous videos so if somebody says hey i want um 60 hosts so you go to an isp and you get an ip address that has slash 26 because you can accommodate up to 62 you'll have two extra right if you have 30 hosts you can use six to a slash 26 but that means you'll be wasting like 32 addresses so give them an address that was slash 27 so that's what we call variable length subnet masking, VLSM. As you increase the slash, you are decreasing the amount of hosts in the LAN because you have more of the bits in, in the IP address for the network and less bits for the hosts, right? So just remember that. All right, so let's... Just write this down, and I'm going to show you an example on how to quickly do subnetting. So here's a network. Here's a topology. Let's say you have one LAN right here and another LAN. The two routers, this router, this is the default gateway for everybody in B. This is the default gateway for everyone in LAN A. Correct? And they are sub. This is going to go over a different geographic area. This is the WAN. This is the link between them. All right. So you went out and go to you. We went out to your ISP and you purchased. As you can see, this is um, 
a global IP address, a public IP address, right? With slash 25. So this is one address, but you have a whole lot. How many networks do you have here? So that's your question. So first, and you count the interfaces on the routers to find out how many networks you have. All right, so you have one right here. This is LAN A and another one, that's LAN B. And the link, these two interfaces on the routers, they share one network. So the link is always a network. So you have three networks, right? By the way, before I continue, I know on the last video, we left off with, uh, just as a reminder, the private IP addresses and the APIBA. Please review uh, video number one of chapter 11 that goes over these. So I, that's the reason I did not go over that. All right, going back to here, we have three LANs, LAN A, LAN B, and the link. So let's say they're asking us, okay, for LAN A, I have, I need 60 hosts here. I need at least 60 hosts. For LAN B, I need at least 20 hosts. And for the link, I only need two hosts, right? One here and one here. I don't need any more. All right, so I want to break up this network to allow me, remember, slash 25 allows me to have up to 126 hosts, right? But I want to break it up so I can give 60, accommodate 60, accommodate um, 20, and two. And whatever is left over, I'll leave it for reserve. All right, so how do you do this sub subnetting? Follow the steps and listen carefully, all right? Because as long as you follow the steps, you will always do this right no matter what. This is as long as you are doing subnetting or anything slash 24 or higher, and slash 25 is higher, you follow the following steps, all right? So you look at all the requirements for all the hosts and you start with the one that requires the most number of hosts. In this case, it's 20. I'm sorry, 60. So for 60 hosts, the first step you're going to do is you're going to look up a chart and say, which slash do I need to accommodate 60 hosts? And the answer is slash 26. You can give them slash 25, but that's not appropriate because that's too much. Slash 27 is not enough because it only accommodates 30. So slash 26 is the perfect answer. So the answer is slash. So that's the first thing. You look at the number of hosts, look up the chart, and find out what your slash is. In this case, slash 26, and it's e you write it in decimal format. All right. Second step you're going to do is you're going to take the new slash, which is 26, minus the old slash. The old slash is 25. All right equal to two and then two to the power of whatever you got the answer is two and that's going to tell you how many subnets you need to create so we're gonna we're gonna break up this network into four uh and i'm sorry 26 minus 25 is not two that's one this shows you how good i'm i'm in math and two to the one is two subnets, right? So we're gonna break it up into two subnets. And then we're gonna do something called the block size. This is, you know, um, block size is always, this is what you, the answer is going to be, what, and you know, this is the difference that's gonna be between the two subnets that you're gonna create. And so it's always, 56 minus the last number in the slash, the new slash. In this case, it's 192. So 256 minus 192 is 64. When you're all done, then you can find out what your two networks are. And they are the first one, you always start with the new one right here. So it is 192.160. Dot 128 and then you add your other address which is 192.168.10 and then you add the 64 the block size to the last address because i use the last address in the mess to calculate the block size so 128 plus 64 
is 192. And both of them are going to be slash 26. Okay, slash 26 and slash 26. All right, so there's your two subnets. Now you need to find out the range of addresses that are valid in these two subnets. All right, the rule is you look at the first address and you add a one as the first address. Remember, 128 is the network portion of that IP. So it will be dot one, two, and to find out the last valid address, you look underneath and you see 192, you subtract the two. And there is your range of IP addresses. And I'm going to give that to LAN A. All right, I'm going to bold type this. So that's the network that you're going to be using for LAN A. And what you do is you go and you fill it in the chart. Where's that chart? I'm going to bring that chart up here. Okay. And network A. What's the network address? 192.168.10.128. So you're at 192.168.10. Dot 128. What's the first address? It's 192.168.168.160. Sorry. 160. I'm getting used to 160.10.129. What's the last address? It's 190. 192.160.10.190. What's the broadcast address? You just add a one to the last host, to the last byte of the last host, which is in this case, it's 192.168.10.191. What's the subnet mask address? Which is what? It's this, right? You can write it in decimal or you can write it as a slash. I'll write it as a slash to make it easier. All right, so it's slash 20 six all right um now you move on to the next and you follow the same procedure all right for 20 hosts what are you going to do you're going to look up the chart and find out to accommodate 20 so you need slash 27 so what you do is you say oh 20 hosts needs a slash 27 which is 255.255.255 224 right and then you say 25 i'm sorry the new mask okay you know what let's stop right here we'll finish this up in the next video all right so write down at least you started the subnetting and you know what's going on right and then what we'll do on the next video is we'll continue with this and we'll do so we'll do subnetting with something where that is less than slash 24 it's a little bit trickier all right so um until the next video write everything up and i'll see you i'll see you then